Hello. Slodja. Oh, cheers. I tend to have a, a, a glass in my hand or something um, all the time when I'm doing these. So, um, oh well, it's very warm. <laughs> Hello. Um, so, it's been four months. We've been here four months thereabouts. So we came over here in January and uh, you can tell by the length of my hair that we've been here a good while. Um, I came when it was nice and short and now it's gotten quite long. Um, it's actually at that stage where it's a pain in the arse, you know, it's like it's neither long and neither short. So it basically does nothing, which is a bit annoying. But uh, and also you can tell by the colour of me. So um, we have been here <laughs> uh, for the four months. So what do I love about Portugal and how has it been? Um, well, I suppose the, the renovation of the house has taken up so long, uh, taken up so much of our time and, and my time. And um, Fabio obviously has been over and back for work and uh, I've been pretty much here uh, the whole time, apart from when I've gone over to do some of my own work uh, to teach my makeup courses because I'm a makeup artist um, and to do weddings and stuff. But uh, generally speaking, I've been pretty much here uh, all the time. Um, and you know what I thought my fears were that I would be lonely or that I would be you know I would be feel a little bit you know alienated because I'm I don't speak the language and uh, I don't speak Portuguese um, I thought that uh, I would be you know homesick for Ireland um, and to be honest I don't feel any of those things um, I've never been a person who has ever, you know, when I go somewhere, I, I try to fit in as much as I possibly can. Um, and I, I adapt to the uh, to the situation I'm in. So I think I've done that pretty well here in, in, in the Algarve. And I have to say, I'm loving it so far. Uh, I know it's only been four months, but, you know, we've been lucky enough to buy a house here we've been lucky enough to um renovate the house to how we want it to look and you know we've got we we're lucky enough to uh um to have great neighbors and and so on so you know we have all of that going for us so we had all of that before we left ireland um and you know it is it is a fantastic place and I just have to say like one of the most beautiful things is waking up in the morning and having, you know, um, you know, pulling the curtains open and just seeing that beautiful color sky and feeling the heat on your body is amazing. I'm very much somebody who likes uh, the, the warmth. Um, I've never been, I've always been, uh, it always used to bother me a lot when I lived in Ireland uh, was the cold, you know, um, I used to dread winter um and then love when spring hit and um and then you'd you'd hope and you'd pray that the sun would be around for at least a couple of weeks of 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 the summer and when it did happen it was just fantastic and you know everywhere came alive and it was so much more vibrant and the great thing about portugal is you have that all the time so even in spring and winter there's sometimes you know like uh, winter time but it was 70 degrees uh, 17 degrees um for most of of january and february and you're like this is our summer in ireland you know um, and I know people go, God, it sounds dreary, Ireland sounds really dreary and so on. It wasn't. It's a beautiful country. It just doesn't have much sunshine. Um, and here we just have it all the time. Now, on the other side of that, it is incredibly hot. So like today it was 31 degrees, um, which is very, very warm. And the poor dog was uh, absolutely, you know, panting his head off. Um, like we were going to bring him for a, a walk uh, earlier on and uh, it was just too hot to bring him out because we knew, you know, after five minutes of him walking around, he'd be absolutely roasting. So we are good. We'll bring him for a walk after I do this. Um, so it does get very, very hot and it will get hotter um, as the summer goes on. This is only early summer, so it will get hotter. Um, what, what do I love about living here so far? What, 
well, I suppose what stands out for me is obviously the weather and our beautiful house. Um, it's um, the fact that, you know, we we sold our house in Ireland and uh, we uh, just briefly, um, we had uh, some debt in Ireland and uh, selling our house was, uh, sorry, that's going down. There you go. Just a little bit of cleavage now. There you go. Yeah, just a smidge. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, in Ireland we sold our house. Uh, we came to the decision to move here to Portugal. It was all done within a few months. We made this decision, uh, this life changing decision. And part of it was um, when we we put our we went to see if we could put our, our house in the market, and we got um, we were incredibly surprised with how much we were they were prepared uh, to uh, pay for the house because Ireland obviously is a huge bubble at the moment when it comes to property. So we said let's put the house in the market. So we did. We got a really good deal in our house and it enabled us to wipe out the debt that we had. We had a debt from a business uh, venture that uh, happened um, years before and that didn't work out. And uh, we got rid of that debt and we had enough money to buy, put a down payment on it uh, to get a mortgage on, on this uh, our house here. And the mortgage here is a lot less than it was in Ireland. And um, it's just it's just a lot better for us and for my husband Fabio's mental health it's just it's fantastic that uh, we did this because it stops the whole sort of um, uh, worry about uh, owing money basically what do you want are you coming up good boy come here oh hello. you come and say hello say hello oh I love you don't I yes I do good boy so um, as a for him uh, he is slowly getting used to the heat. Um, it is, it is a struggle. Um, he's a big hairy white little polar bear. Um, so it is a little bit um, harder for him. But you know he loves the evenings here. So during the daytime, he tends to just go underneath the. Uh, um, uh, a chair or whatever and uh, hide from the sun but he still is a bit um, not clued in so when I come out here to sit and in the sun uh, he'll jump up and sit beside me and he's, he'll pant his head off and, and he's like why is it so hot and you're like Linus get the hell underneath the, 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 the couch not on top of it so he's getting used to that. Um, what do I love uh, about Portugal? Sorry, it keeps on going down. Um, so the things I thought I, I would miss obviously was home and um, the things that I suppose I find difficult about being over here is just not being able to talk to everybody freely like I would at home because people don't understand me. Um, now, the majority of people over here speak um, English, so it's really, really good for communication. Um, but still, you know, banter and chats and um, I'm a very chatty person. I like to chat to my waitress when she comes over to me. Um, you know, I miss doing that uh, with people. And uh, but, you know, that's up to me to to learn the language. I have to start learning the language. And um, that is something I really, really need to get my head around. And I think I'm I. The reason I haven't started is I'm sort of scared of failing at it and of maybe not understanding. I'm, you know, I'm a 50 year old man and I'm thinking to myself, I, maybe I'll never learn or maybe I won't be able to do this, but I have to try. And uh, that's what I need to do. I need to try. So that is going to be one of my big, big goals over from from now really on is to start speaking the language or at least understanding it much better. I mean, I do speak a couple of words. I do speak, you know, I know I'd say hello, goodbye and how are you and all of that sort of stuff but I need to know an awful lot more so that's one of my big goals and um, while I when we're um, because we live here now um, I thought I'd miss my family and my friends um, you know of course I do um, but one of the great things is we have WhatsApp and we can watch each other and we can talk to each other I mean I was on to my friend Pam um, yesterday for two and a half hours while we drank a bottle of wine um, so you know there is that so it's great with uh, social media and communication thing living abroad is so much easier than than it ever has been um, obviously I miss my family and um, but my niece for instance is coming over um, in June she's coming over with some of her friends and they're staying in our apartment that we have here uh, nearby and uh, so I can't 
can't wait to see her and then my brother is coming over with his family in August and then we friends who have been over uh, our best friends have been over they came over for a week a couple of weeks ago which I showed you on here and uh, that was fantastic fun so um, people are making an effort to come over and, and to see us and obviously Fabio and I are going over and back to Ireland um, a lot as well so that part of it I don't really miss I'm, I'm not I'm not homesick for that um, but just the banter and stuff I would basically be be homesick for um, what I love about here is number one the people people are they're so nice you know they really really are and they make such an effort to be nice to you um, and I really like that and uh, uh, like our neighbors are just lovely you know we've one neighbor into this side of us and you know she drops in eggs to us from her chickens and she you know she she speaks good English so she always makes a point of coming over and speaking to me and seeing how I am and they're just really really lovely um, uh, and then food here, you know, I love the food here. Um, you know, you go to restaurants here and it's just, you know, it's half the price of what it would be in Dublin. So you could go to a fantastic restaurant here and uh, eat really, really well. And uh, it would be, you know, it, it's it's just so much cheaper to eat out and to have alcohol and so on than it would be in Ireland, than it is in Ireland. I just, it really is unbelievable. I, I'll do comparisons as, as I do more of these videos. I'll show you some comparisons um, in, in restaurants and stuff, but it really, you know, it just, you know, it's one of the things that really annoys me about Ireland is it, it really is rip off Ireland, you know, but, and I know it's not the restaurateur's fault and, and the restaurant's fault and because it's just that the government taxes the bejesus out of everything. So you have to, you know, you have to pay um, a certain amount. So over here, you don't have that. So uh, food is, is uh, restaurant food is, is so much cheaper. Um, the thing I, well, I'm surprised at is that um, actually food here, when you go to supermarket food here is is as expensive or the same price as in Ireland now I don't know whether that's because of the pandemic now or because of uh, you know of uh, pricing around the world and what's going on in the world at the moment um, but I know that for instance if you buy um, Portuguese products they're definitely a lot cheaper than buying imported products so um, but then an awful lot of the products you have to buy you buy are imported so um, you have to to buy them um, but uh, that's so food um, in supermarkets would be more or less the same price if not a tiny bit more expensive than in Ireland which is fairly expensive anyway um, one thing about here compared to Ireland uh, meat this the quality of meat in Ireland is exceptional but then you know we have green fields we've rain all the time it's extremely fertile whereas here the quality of meat is nowhere near as good as it is in Ireland and I have to say that's I really really miss that like when you go into um, Aldi here and we do our weekly shop you know pork for instance there's loads of pork products because I think pork is made is uh, there's lots of um, pigs are, are farmed here a lot um, so pork is a reasonable price but if you're going to buy a steak or whatever it's a lot more expensive than it would be at home um chicken and so on is you know chickens in ireland would be a lot bigger here they're a lot a lot smaller now that's maybe because there's lots of chemicals pumped into them at home i don't know but i don't think so um, so that would be the quality of meat uh, being a, a full on meat eater. Uh, the quality of meat um, is is a lot uh, is much better in Ireland than it is here. Um, the other great thing about being here vegetables and fruit and so on is so much better quality than at home because it grows here because it's so warm here um one of the things i absolutely adore is you know when you're driving uh, down the street in your car and there's orange trees over here and lemon trees there and you know everyone's got a lemon tree and an orange tree in their garden i just think that's amazing and um, i love the fact that i wake up every morning and freshly squeeze my orange juice we, we buy our, our oranges from a little old man and his i think it must be his father 
and they have a sort of a, 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 a container, you know, one of their ship, shipbuilding containers and uh, they, they, they sell their oranges and they must be farmers and they sell their oranges out of that and I'm having a bog's notion what they say to me but they always talk to me and um, well, they're quite grumpy people so they always grumpy, get grumpy conversations from them and then they have a little argument in front of you when you buy your, your big sack of oranges for five euro which is fantastic. So I love the fresh orange juice every morning and our smoothie is really, really good um, so one of the things I was nervous about about coming over here would be my work um, being a freelance makeup artist uh, it is a you know I was nervous about uh, being here because obviously I've established myself in Ireland um, and I will be well known in Ireland as a makeup artist so I have um, a good bit of work over there so I was nervous about that but uh, honestly one of the great things was uh, when I came over here first, um, a, an article was put online about me from um, a really good mate of mine. She put, she did, a, a, Laura, thank you very much. She did a, a piece on me for evoke.ie, which is an online uh, magazine, big online magazine in Ireland. And um, then a magazine over here, uh, Algarve Living, who I write for now, um, saw the article and got in touch with me. And they were they, they did a piece on me, a four page piece on me. Uh, and showed my work and so on so it was a really nice introduction for me to the Algarve and through that I started writing for them which I'm delighted about excuse me the beer is repeating on me which I'm delighted about and then also um, uh, the wedding planners, good wedding planners who are around here, like uh, fantastic uh, wedding planners, weddings by Rebecca and so on, who are here in the Algarve, who are just lovely and really amazing. They've been um, uh, throwing work my way. So, you know, my summer, which I thought would be, I have a good few weddings in Dublin, so I have to fly over and back to do them. But I thought um, I would be less busy over here. But as it turns out, um, I'm as busy here as I am in Dublin um, for the summer months, which is really 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 great um, and weddings are starting to come in for next year um you know so for october and november uh, i'm here in the algarve so it is you know it is something that we've given you know fabio and i have given me uh, a year to to establish myself here and uh, i think it's going to work out fine um i'm i'm not blowing my own horn but i'm very good at what i do so um, hopefully we're, once I start Instagramming and putting lots of uh, pictures of, of, of my brides here in the Algarve and, and anywhere in Portugal because, um, you know, I have a car, I will travel. Um, but uh, I think once that starts happening, I'll start getting um, a lot more weddings in. And um, at the moment, you know, we're just acclimatizing to everything. So um, it's really good that uh, I have this time to be in the house and to get everything right. And uh, Fabio obviously is over and back to Dublin. Um, we have a he has a, a, a place to stay in Dublin thankfully um, a, a residence in Dublin to stay so he's over and back and he's working really really hard um, and uh, um, he's fine with that and it, it seems to be working out well for him what he has done is he, he got a um, uh, one of the lounge passes you know to go into the airport lounge and um, because he's doing quite a bit of flying um, and with his work as well he flies around the world and um, so he, he got a lounge pass which will really help and you know it um, in the long run it'll be a lot cheaper for him to go into the lounge and eat food and relax in the lounge as opposed to spending lots of money in the airport and spending so much money on on, on um, like like six or seven euro on a sandwich when he can go into the lounge and, and have it there so that's um, one thing he's done for him for his travel um which which we was a really good idea to do i think if anyone's uh, i'm sure people who travel all the time and um, it's probably something they all do as well they have um you know passes into lounges or into you know um airline lounges or whatever um so okay so uh, my pet my my complaints so far about portugal um there really isn't many, but I suppose would be the fact that uh, people don't pick up after their dogs. So, you know, there is poo everywhere. There's dog poo everywhere, which is really annoying and uh, which looks really awful. 
Um, so, you know, I would always bring, we always bring poo bags out with us and when Linus goes, we pick it up and we put it in the bin. But it doesn't seem to be a regular occurrence here in the Algarve. Um, uh, I don't know if it's enforced or, or not, but it's just a pity that it doesn't happen because, you know, we've I've seen people's dogs, big, huge dogs, do ginormous dumps and just walk on. And it's sort of, um, you know, you're just sort of like, okay. Um, but that's, that's one thing that annoys me. Um, also, every household has a dog here, um, pretty much especially where we live. We live in the suburbs, so we're just outside um, uh, Amazon de Paris. So we're about five minutes from, from by car, we're about five minutes from the centre of Amazon de Paris. And uh, so it would be the suburbs. It's beautifully quiet, as you can hear. Except when the dogs bark their heads off so we our neighbor has a dog here our neighbor has three dogs here our other neighbor has a, a huge big uh, this way has a huge ginormous big dog that um is really scary um and then every other household has a dog so the minute one dog barks the whole entire area end up barking so you're literally you've got um, just this racket of dog barking for about five to ten minutes um, so that happens during the day and sometimes in the evening um, you know and I've been told by everybody it's just part of Portuguese life you just have to get used to it and um, they don't you know most Portuguese people don't bring their dogs inside they live outside in kennels or whatever um, so you know you just have to sort of grin and bear it so I'm trying to grin and bear it <coughs> um, I still find it a bit grating on my nerves but as you can hear there's not a dog barking now and there hasn't been for the last hour and a half so you just got to so we have to sort of grin and bear it and, and learn to accept it I love the fact that I get to wear these all the time. <laughs> my sunnies, my sunglasses. Um, I never had to wear them in Dublin because there's never any sun, but now I get to wear them all the time. So that's always a good thing. Um, what I miss about Dublin, I suppose now, four months on, is I don't get to see my mother as often. Um, my mum, unfortunately, has very on, um, late onset uh, Alzheimer's so she's in a bad way um, and I, I you know get to, even though she has absolutely no idea who I am or my brothers are um, I still you know miss not going in to see her as often and um, so when I'm home I'll, I go straight to see her but uh, even though she has no idea uh, who or, or I am and it's getting to the point now in her uh, dementia where um, she really has no idea she can't remember how to speak and um, so it is difficult to watch uh, but that I have to say I really miss you know miss just jumping in the car and going down to see how she is. I never thought I'd say this, but I love driving on the left-hand side of the road. Maybe it's because I'm a lefty, I'm a left-handed person, but I feel much more secure driving on the left-hand side of the road than I do on the right-hand side. Um, Linus. So now you'll hear the, the, the barking chorus. That's the big scary dog that lives next door. Linus! I'll stop this until he stops barking. The barking has stopped. Um, so, yes, love, love driving on the left hand side of the road, which I was terrified of doing when I first got here because I, I have no sense of direction. So um, I was a little bit scared of that, but now I'm totally fine and I really like it. Um, so maybe that's because I'm, as I said, a left handed person. I'm not sure. Um, yes, yeah, so another thing, um, love entertaining. Uh, you know, we had our friends Paul and Serge over and it was just so much fun. They were over for uh, five days and we just had such a lovely time with them. And it's great that they came over here and it was a destination for them to come to. And we went to the beach and we went out for nice food and we did all of that sort of stuff. And so I can't wait to do that with more of my friends and my family. 
um, and just to show them around and to, you know, uh, just have a really nice time with them in that way. You know, one of the things is, you know, we, when you and your friends are together at home or in Ireland and, um, you know, you see them for a couple of hours a week or, you know, you go for dinner and, and so on. But here, you know, they'll be probably staying with me um, and they, you know, you, we have to communicate more and we, we're in each other's uh, faces for the uh, time that they're here. Um, and uh, it's really nice, it's really, really nice. I really enjoy uh, the entertaining uh, part of being over here um, and showing people around and uh, uh, just basically enjoying yourself with your mates petty little note. The thing I don't like about here, one of the things that really bothers me is I am a crisp addict. Um, so I think in America you call them chips. Um, that's drop again. Um, yes, I, I find it very annoying uh, not to be able to have my favourite crisps over here, which are called Tato. Um, it's a brand of crisps in Ireland and they're delicious and they're, they're, salt and, uh, they're cheese and onion flavour. And they're just a really, really tangy cheese and onion flavor, really strong flavor. And I really miss those because um, lay crisps just do not cut it over here. They taste of nothing. They are like eating pieces of wafer of cardboard. Um, and it's really hard to get a good, decent crisp over here. So um, when uh, Fabio comes home um, uh, or when I'm in Dublin, for one of the first things I do is go and buy a couple of bags of crisps and stuff my face. And I miss things like uh, meanies and I miss uh, meanies are a pickled onion flavour snack crisp. And I miss all of that sort of stuff. So there are things I miss. So confectionery I miss because uh, uh, it's just not the same here as it is in Ireland. <laughs> also, I never thought I'd be one of these people who would go, oh, I miss tea. I am a coffee drinker, essentially, but I also love tea. I got back into drinking tea just before I moved over here. And uh, there's only one tea in the world to drink, and it's called Barry's Tea. And it was what my father would have called, God rest him, it's what my father would have called Fine Gael Tea, which is a political party in Ireland, because the man who ran the Fine Gael was Barry's, and he made this tea. So it uh, runs in my family and my father was a staunch Fianna Foiler, which is the opposite party but the only thing he liked about Fianna Gael was the tea so uh, I uh, love my Barry's tea and it's a lovely specific strength and uh, I really miss that I have to say because tea over here just is not as strong so when I go home next time I'm going to bring, bring back a big box of Barry's tea there is a couple of things that I like and I dislike about our move here to the Algarve, but basically if I was to give it um, a, you know, a, a one to ten, I would say I am about a eight to a nine about our move to the Algarve. I'm delighted that we've done it and uh, I, uh, I love being here and uh, I really love the, the, the uh, Portugal and uh, and it makes us both, me and my husband, really happy to be here. Um, and it has been good for, not just for, for me, but it's also been good for him and good for our relationship. Um, so yeah, so they are a couple of things that I love and some stuff I don't like. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'd love you to comment and tell me how you feel. If, are you in the same situation? Is there stuff that you've um, you've moved and, and you want to you wanna get off your chest? Please do. Oh, here's the dogs again. Um, but uh, also, please, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, that would really help. Uh, I believe that because by the end of the year, I want to be a millionaire from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, but yeah, just like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you again soon. Slon, Akaspanaquiv Galair.